Hi class, let's chat about what's going on this week. Please ignore the unpacking behind me. Hopefully it's not too distracting for you. So you've turned in your results section. Thank you for that. Um, you should receive a grid by Monday afternoon at the latest. I'm hoping I will let you know if something changes and we end up needing to push that back. I hope that you enjoyed the results section because this is exciting. You're seeing the results. You're seeing the results of what you've done. Um, you've seen what real respondents say and along the way you've learned some of the pitfalls of writing a survey and collecting data. There are a lot of things to learn with data collection and survey development. In graduate school you take multiple classes on this. We spend two weeks. So if you didn't get it perfect, if you didn't collect the number of responses you wanted, if the results weren't what you hoped they would be, that's okay. This is a process. If you end up doing this in your future career, you have some exposure to how this goes and you will receive significantly more training. There are a number of books, online training, things of that nature that you should look into and have access to just hanging out there on the internet um, to help further your knowledge of this. Like I said, in graduate school, you would go over this for a number of semesters, but we've had a quick and dirty lesson on that. Okay, so several things about those results. Um, some of you found that the results were somewhat difficult to put into paragraphs. That's true. It is difficult. But keep in mind that in order for someone to understand your results, you need to write it in a way that they would understand. And so we need to follow the basic conventions of writing. We need to have an introductory sentence. The paragraph needs to flow together. We need to have a transition, a concluding sentence, things of that nature. Paragraphs need to be made up of like information. It's okay to pull from various survey questions to answer a research question. That's what I expect you to do. But it still needs to sound like a college student and not a high schooler wrote this. So keep that in mind. We're trying to elevate our level of writing this semester. Okay, so I'm sure that you have noticed that this week and next week are a little bit on the lighter side. Now that you've turned those results in, having a little bit of a lull. Please do not let yourself think that this is a lull. This is meant to help you have time to get that final research paper where it needs to be. Don't lull yourself into that false sense of security that you're doing great, you're gonna take a few days off. No, do not do that. Make sure that that final paper is where it needs to be and then take a few days to breathe. Remember your final paper is due on the third final paper is worth a lot of points. It is worth 100 points and the final paper has a significant impact on your final peer evaluation. What do I mean by that? Well, your final peer evaluation is weighted against your final paper grade. So for example, if you receive a 90 on your final paper, then a 90 is the highest you can get on that final peer evaluation. If you received 100% participation points from your group members, but you guys received a 90 on your paper, then 100% of the final peer evaluation grade would be a 90%. I know it's confusing. I will send you the formula how I calculate it. Um, whether we agree or disagree on how this should be calculated, this is how the on-campus instructors have asked us to do it. So all on-campus, all online, they all calculate the grade the same way, where we weight your final peer evaluation score against your final paper score. And that is because there is a belief that if your group received a 90, 80, whatever, that that is basically how much effort your group has put in this semester. I understand the logic is a little bit worrisome, please give this final paper your best shot because it's not just the final paper, it's also the final peer evaluation that is affected. So as we have done with all of the other previous assignments that go with that final paper, I am happy to read over your final paper and provide feedback um, as long as it is submitted to me no later than Sunday, March 31st. Remember that paper is due on the 3rd. If you submit it to me by Sunday at 11 p.m. on the 31st, I should be able to get you feedback on April 1st. No, it will not be April Fool's feedback. It will be real feedback, but it will come out on April 1st. Make sure when you send me those papers for feedback that you send them as a Word doc or as a Google doc. I can't put comments on a PDF as much as I would like to, and it's not so useful. And if we're having that back and forth um, where I ask you to send it and then you know there's some lag time, 
it doesn't give you the full amount of time to make those changes and corrections. Please also keep in mind that if you submit the paper for feedback and choose to ignore all of it and submit the paper as is, your grade will reflect that you received feedback, chose not to accept any of it, and submitted the paper as is. In some cases that's fine because your paper is awesome. But if your paper has a lot of feedback on it and it really isn't where it needs to be to get the grade you're hoping, you're going to see that in the final paper if you've submitted it for early feedback. The purpose of early feedback is so that you can make those changes in advance and improve your paper. I want you to improve your grade. However, it is a big waste of time if you don't want to take that feedback and you just turn it in as is. If you just want to turn your paper in as is, I highly recommend that you do not request early feedback. It will save frustration on both of our parts. So let's just keep that in mind. Let's talk about the discussion section because the discussion section is a really important part of the final paper. And it sometimes gets sidelined because there is not a specific discussion section assignment. The discussion section is the so what. This is where you tell me why do your results matter and how do your results fit in with the larger body of research. So if you found that let's say 50% of people believe that you can get enough protein on a vegetarian diet and 20% of people were neutral on that and the rest of the people didn't think that you could get enough protein on a vegetarian diet. Okay, that's awesome. You've told me that. But what does that mean? What, what is the implication of that? What changes need to be made to people's health? What changes need to be made to people's awareness? And how does that relate to what you saw in your lit review? This is where you tie your results back to that lit review. Is that the same that previous researchers have found? Is that new? How, how does your study fit into that larger body of research? This is also where you talk about your study limitations. If you were one of the groups who did not receive the number of responses that you had hoped on your survey, this is where you discuss that. You discuss what receiving few responses means. What are the implications of receiving very few responses? This is also where you talk about your recommendations for future researchers. What did you find through your research that you would do differently next time? What would you recommend that future researchers look at? Was there an aspect of your project that after receiving the results you feel, I wish I had looked into that further? This is a great time to recommend that future researchers look further into whatever topic that is. Okay, let's talk about this again. Don't worry. I'll talk about it next week too. This discussion section is going to be the so what, why does your research matter? It's going to talk about the limitations of your study, sample size, how you sampled people, whatever you feel those limitations are, discuss those in depth and your recommendations for future research. The discussion section will include citations. It will include citations. Say it with me. It will include citations. You will be referencing your lit review. You need to look at your results within the context of the larger body of research. So how do your results relate to those things you found during your lit review? going to be awesome. I know I know this is going to be awesome. Think about the paper this way. You have about one and a half pages of lit review. So that original lit review, you're going to need to crunch that down, keep only the relevant information and citations in there. You're going to have about half a page of research questions. That's how it typically works out. I highly recommend you bullet and bold those so that everyone knows those are the research questions. You're going to have another two-thirds to a page for methods section, so we're at about three pages at this point, maybe one and a half to two pages for the results section, and the rest is that discussion section. You want to leave yourself one and a half to two pages about for that discussion section. Remember, this has a six-page limit. That means I stop reading at six pages. Your title page, your abstract, your references, and appendices are not included in those six pages. It's six pages of text. The text will be double-spaced with one-inch margins, 12-point font. We've covered that, right? One-inch margins, double-spaced, 12-point font. Say it with me. Yes. This is a college paper. We're submitting it like a college paper. And your final paper will be submitted as a PDF, but those early drafts I read will not be submitted as PDFs because I cannot make comments on a PDF. Okay, so once that final paper is done and submitted, you take a night off, 
Breathe, Netflix, ice cream, something awesome. And then we move right into that research poster. The research poster is an individual assignment. So as soon as you submit that final research paper, complete your peer evaluations because you are done with your group for the rest of the semester. Isn't that exciting? It's a little exciting. Um, okay, so that research poster. The research poster is basically a visual representation of your research project. So you're gonna include the most relevant points in that research poster. And don't worry, we will discuss this again next week, but one of the most relevant points of your research poster is the research questions. If your paper does not include the research questions, we have a serious problem because we don't know what the paper is about. We don't know what the poster is about. So the poster, it needs to include those research questions, bold, bulleted, in a way that the reader can see them. Another thing, it needs to include the lit review. And by the lit review, I don't mean you copy and paste the lit review and you put it in the tiniest writing ever and someone has to blow it up on a big screen to be able to read it. No, pick out the most relevant parts and the citations. The method section needs to be included. The res relevant results need to be included. The relevant discussion section and the relevant references in addition to any charts, tables, et cetera, that you choose to include. This is the place where you want those charts and tables because in a lot of cases, those are gonna help the reader, the viewer, understand your project better than anything else. Make sure any chart table figure that you include in the paper or the final research poster is done in APA format. That means it includes a title like figure 1.1 and a label that is descriptive of the chart figure table, whatever we're referring to. If you have any questions about how to format um, figures in AP format, please look at the Purdue OWL. You can Google the Purdue OWL. You can get the link in the syllabus, or you probably have it because APA and the Purdue OWL go hand in hand. So that's what we're doing this week. In addition to that, oh my heavens, we're at 12 minutes. I'm so sorry. In addition to that, this week we are talking about focus groups, and focus groups are an awesome topic, but unfortunately one that does not get much um, time in our class. Focus groups are one of the best ways to collect um, qualitative data, and the reason we don't do qualitative data so much in this class is because it is difficult to set up, time-consuming to collect, and it requires a bit more training than we have time to do. So. You're gonna watch a focus group. I will admit it's not a fantastic focus group. We are still trying to find a better one to include a video of, but for some reason there's not a lot of videos of focus groups. But think about times when you have been in a focus group. If you've ever attended one of the self-reliance seminars the church has put on, those are focus groups. If you have ever had access to the self-reliance seminars moderator guides, those are focus groups. That is actually a really, really good thing to look at. You can find them on the church website, those moderator guides. They're an excellent example of what a focus group moderator needs to do. There are questions, there are topics, there are ways for the moderator to lead the discussion while keeping their own opinion out of it. The church's guide um, does encourage the moderator to provide a little bit of their own experience, and typically a moderator wouldn't do that. I did provide an example of a moderator's guide in the previous week's announcements, so you can take a look at that. As you look at these focus groups, think about why you might want to use a focus group in the future, but what some of the pitfalls are. We usually see a focus group or an interview paired with a questionnaire, just because that the questionnaire responses tend to be a little bit more objective than the qualitative data, because qualitative data requires that you, as the researcher, develop codes or buckets where you end up sorting the information you aren't able to run a statistical test. It is based a lot more on your opinion. So just keep that in mind as you do the reading. I highly recommend that if you have the time that you go through and look at some of those supplemental reading materials I provided in the previous week's announcement. Let me know if you have any questions as you move forward with your research paper. I know that you guys can do it. It's almost the end. Who's excited that it's almost the end? It's almost graduation for some of you. It's an exciting time. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for suffering through till the end.